Yes, class. Is this audible? So who all are there? Maria and Zia. Audible to both of you? All right. You both are able to. Fine. So Zia, I think a class that you had missed last week. There we had covered few things. Basically, we had covered that. Electric current was what? So electric current, basically we had started with chapter number three. So we had seen electric current was the basic phenomena for the current electricity to produce, to run through. And electric current is actually charge divided by time, whatever is the rate of flow of charge, we call it current. After that, we had seen Ohm's law in the last class only. Ohm's law means potential you all must have done in the previous classes. And your earlier lessons, you are aware of potential. I'll send you the video link today. You can even watch the potential videos. But first, I think you should watch that electric field and charges. I'll send you electric field video first so that it goes in an order. Now, Ohm's law says that if the temperature remains constant, if the pressure remains constant, then all of the potential difference that is applied within the circuit is directly proportional to the current flowing through it. So V is, e is directly proportional to I. Here we got introduced to a constant term that was known as R, whose full form was resistance. Now in the last class, we didn't see or we didn't study resistance in detail. Whatever phenomena was of resistance, we just studied that it's a constant that comes in also. Now in today's class, we'll be studying resistance in detail. What is meant by resistance? What is resistance? So these, this graph also we had seen, V versus I will be a straight graph. And I think till here we did. Yes, class, others who were present, this question we had completed. All right. So now let's just focus on the constant that we are writing, this R. This has a significance. It has a physical significance as well as it has a mathematical significance. So Zia, because you have missed your last test, so anywhere if you're not able to understand, ask me, I'll repeat that topic. And that goes for others also. Whatever you are not able to understand, you can simply ask. Now, so according to Ohm's law, Ohm's law was V is equal to IR. So from here, I can write the value of resistance. So this becomes the first equation of resistance. You will see three equations of resistance and all of these three will be used, especially this first one that we are doing and the third one that we will do. Those two will definitely be used in your question solving. Second one is used mainly in your theoretical questions. So R will be what? R can be written as potential divided by current. So this is the first equation of resistance, potential ratio of potential difference and the current flowing. And this is from our own slow. First equation. Now, we did two derivations in the last class. First, we did the derivation of drift velocity. Remember, drift velocity is the velocity with which all the, it's actually the average velocity. So with that average velocity, all the electrons tend to drift towards the positive terminal of the battery. As soon as the electric field is applied, so all of the, all of the electrons that are present in the conductor, in the wire, they tend to drift towards the positive terminal. We call that velocity drift velocity. And can anyone tell? If you remember well and good, even if you don't remember by looking into your notes, can you tell me a relation we derived between electric current and drift velocity? A formula we had discussed. I is equal to NEAVD. NEA. So this, there was one relation. See if this is a conductor. So again, emphasizing for all those, don't think this is a cylindrical box, something, a simple wire like this. A thin wire is there, or a wire like this, a wire like this, simple thin wire is there. It's just that to understand it, we are drawing it broadly. So a wire is there, this middle section I have drawn it broadly and connected to a cell. So what will happen? Current will also flow and there will be a drift velocity as well. Let's say the length of the conductor is L. So a relation that we derived was I is equal to NEAVD. 
This was a formula. N is the number of electrons, number density. E is the electronic charge. That is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. A is the area of cross section. This is known as the cross section. This is known as the cross section. So basically, A is the area of the cross section. Like if I say this, then this is the cross section. This is known as the transverse section. This is known as cross section. Area of cross section, VD was drift velocity. And what was the formula of drift velocity that we got? See, we are going very slow in these first two, four classes. We'll be going slow, then we'll hurry up to the syllabus. So what was the formula of drift velocity? Look, look, just turn the pages. Look, you must. yes, yes, Mithil. A into tau, right? A into tau, that's right. A into tau, that's right. But what's the value of, of A that we put? Because you cannot leave your answer at that step. Minus E, E by M. E, e by M. See, formula of drift velocity is, let's not write minus sign right now because minus sign depicts this direction that electric field and drift velocity both are in opposite direction so drift velocity formula is the magnitude is small e into capital e divided by m that is the acceleration this portion is the known as the acceleration e is the electronic charge capital e is the electric field m is the mass multiplied by tau See, tau is average relaxation time. So all those who were not in the previous class, relaxation time basically means when two electrons collide with each other, then before the commencement of the next collision, the electron sits or electron relaxes and waits for a few milliseconds. And those very small little milliseconds, we call it as the relaxation time. That electron is not right now colliding. Electron is totally relaxed right now. And now the electron will begin the next journey of collision. Basically, collisions keep on occurring in the wire through which we see current. So that is known as average relaxation time. Now, if I put all the value of average relaxation time, of drift velocity in this formula, see what will I get? So I is equal to NEA. Instead of VD, if I write this whole term, that is EE tau divided by M. See, are clear till here? Because are these two formula clear for you? All right. Wherever you have issues, ask me. All right. Now, a general question to all of you, not from the last class, a general question. Do you people know the relation between electric field and potential? There's a relation between electric field and potential, and that's clearly given in two lines in your NCRT chapter number two also. Are you people aware of that relation? Anyone who must have started? Electric field potential with respect to distance. Let me give you the hint. Distance length. Okay, just tell me, have you all gone through this formula ever? E is equal to minus dV by dr. Yes or no? No. No? See, there's a, this is a very important formula. Then we have to discuss it. See, let me discuss it first. I'll send you the video also. But as I'm saying, let's first complete the, we'll complete the videos of electric field. See, E, this is a very important relation. It's given in your NCRT and it comes in your board exam. Two very important points are mentioned there in this lesson. That is your chapter number two of NCRT, electric potential and capacitance. Potential, you people know, it's the vector form of, is the, it's the scalar form of electric field. Electric field, I have already told you that it's the space that is confined within a charge where electrical properties can be experienced. So electric field is basically directly proportional to the potential gradient. Now what is meant by gradient? Gradient means if anything gets divided by distance. Like remember when we were doing electric current, so I told you that it's the rate of flow of charges. So rate meant what? Rate meant charge divided by time. Anything that gets divided by time, we call it as rate. 
Now, anything, if it gets divided by position, like here, this is getting divided by position. So we call it as a gradient. And what type of gradient is depicted over here? That is the potential gradient. So electric field is directly proportional to potential gradient. That's the first point. Second important point that is mentioned in the book is that significance of this negative sign. This negative sign basically shows that electric field, uh, I, I'll show you the slide also in the other batches, I must have done this. This negative sign shows that electric field decreases wherever potential increases or potential decreases wherever electric field increases. So these two points are important. I will send you the video lecture today where we have covered this. We have done partial derivation also. So E is equal to minus GV by dr. Basically, if you have potential, which is non-uniform, you have it in terms of variable x, y, z, and you can differentiate it with respect to position to get the value of electric field. Now, in general, we write this formula as potential divided by the distance or the length. So this formula, we are going to put the value of electric field over here. So current will be what? N E A. Okay, this becomes square E into E and E A square tau divided by M. Now what is left? Electric field. So instead of electric field, I can put potential by length. First, tell me, is it clear till here? Any doubts till here regarding the potential portion or this part? Any doubts? No. Here? All right. Now, what is the formula? C, I is equal to N E square A tau M L V. Let's just shift. Let's just shift few things. Let's send I over here and all this, all these terms over there. Let's just send them. See what are we getting? If I send potential over here, so this becomes what? This becomes ML divided by A and E square tau into I. Just reciprocal. I've sent this term over there and this current term over here. Uh, Ziad, which portion? Just tell me which part. Before this one. All right. This electric potential one. All right. See. Just, just, this is important. Uh, let me see if we have it. There, we must have done it in the class. No, so. Okay. Look, look. See, there's a relation between electric field and potential. So I'm not writing everything from this slide. This was covered in some batch earlier. It was covered. So everything is written right now. So you people can see from here. Electric, there's a relation between electric field and potential. Basically, if you write work done's formula, that is force into displacement, and this is a part of your course, I'll send you the link also of this video whenever this was done i'll send you right now only today in today's class i'll send you you people are not added on the whatsapp group yet no no ma'am no 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 okay i'll make you add first and i'll send you there's a whatsapp group for the whole class girls group is separate boys group is separate but all the batches are together so you will be able to get it I'll be mentioning the batch Saturday, Sunday, 4 to 6.30, like this. I'll mention, so we'll get to. So, fine. So, work done is what? Work done is basically force into displacement. Also, if we write the value of force as QE, we get the work done's value as QE into DR. 
according to the according to this equation and also work done is equal to charge into potential difference this is because of by definition this is the definition of potential difference now if we equate both of these equations because work done will be the same we get electric field is dv over dr dv over dr or you can simply write potential divided by distance this can be easy to remember now any quantity that gets divided by position or distance or length any quantity that gets divided we call it as gradient so here it becomes the potential gradient so electric field is proportional to what electric field is proportional to this gradient and this is what this is the potential gradient now we just add a negative sign negative sign is there just for the direction so that's why in the calculation i haven't added it this negative sign shows that electric field decreases where potential increases see see this example all of you here it is 5 volt here it is 2 volt there are two points a point b point there are two points 5 volt and 2 volt so what should be the direction of electric field where the potential decreases that will be the direction of electric field so potential will decrease towards 2 volt so this becomes the direction of electric field wherever potential is less that becomes the direction now tell me is the this formula portion here because this will this is a separate topic that i understand but this v is v divided by r or v divided by l is utilized in the derivation that's why i made you do it first tell me is this part clear to all of you ziad clear now coming back to current electricity so if you just revert what did we do we just reversed it we kept v over here and sent everything now can anyone tell me v is here i is here ohm's law was ohm's law this v is equal to ir yes ohm's law was this only v is equal to ir so v is here i is here it means what is this term this is basically r do we have the formula of resistance now resistance is basically ml divided by a and e square tau that's the second formula of resistance if you compare it with the main equation using ohm's law this is potential potential current current whatever remained that will be the resistance so m is the mass of the conduct mass of the electron l is length of conductor i let me write out this see over here this is the mass of electron this is the length of conductor r is resistance area of cross section and rest of the things will be the same so a is what a will be the area of cross section n is again number density e is electronic charge tau is average relaxation time and r is of course resistance that's the second formula first formula was what v is equal to ir now using v is equal to ir using other formula we derived that value of resistance is ml divided by a n e square tau we'll have one more formula of resistance that we'll see later before that before you start noting everything down just remember few theory points and this point and this point is very very important resistance by looking at this equation no r is equal to ml divided by a n e square tau you can easily see resistance is directly proportional to length and resistance is inversely proportional to area of cross section these points are very important and why are they important because this will be used in resistivity that is your next topic resistance depends on material for example if this pen this pen must be having a different value of resistance there's a plastic spoon it will be having different value of resistance 
there will be a copper wire it will be having different value of resistance so it depends on the nature of material and the fourth point temperature resistance depends on temperature how it depends on temperature we have a separate topic in current electricity only temperature dependency of resistance so there you have separate formula so that that we'll see later but right now two formula you have understood first is v is equal to i are using ohm's law second is ml divided by a n e squared tau now one more thing we are continuously discussing resistance 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 but actually the term resistance is that when the electrons or anything were colliding let's say electron two electrons were colliding and the collision stopped because of a positively charged ion so i'll say that this positively charged ion resisted the flow of electron the resistance term means no basically opposition the current was flowing smoothly the charges were flowing smoothly but because of some obstruction because of any obstacle the current flow means the flow of electron stopped it decreased and this opposition or oppose in the motion of charge we call it as resistance by definition and the si unit of this term resistance one more thing that you should add is the si unit si unit is this symbol we call the symbol as ohm but the symbol is actually a greek symbol which is known as omega so that no need to go into the details just remember this si unit is ohm because of ohm's law clear till here start writing down from here wherever which ever point you not able to understand ask me i'll
Dan? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I think all of you have written it now. Now see, resistance definition. What is the resistance definition? So a resistance is a measure of opposition of the current flowing and direction in electric circuit SI unit is one that we have already discussed. Now resistivity, what is the phenomenon of resistivity? What is meant by resistivity? This is the next topic. And it's related to resistance only. It is related very much to resistance. If you've understood resistance clearly, you'll be able to understand resistivity. So there were two important points that I was telling you when we were discussing on what factors do res does resistivity, resistance depend on. Remember two points I had made you highlight that those two points are very important. First point was that resistance is directly proportional to the length. And second point said that resistance is inversely proportional to area cross-sectional area. So if we put this, R is directly proportional to A. Second point says R is inversely proportional to A. So on what factors does R depend? R is directly proportional to L by A. Similar to Ohm's law, what did we do in Ohm's law? We removed the proportionality sign. We put an equal, equal to symbol and a constant. That's how in mathematics you re, re, replace the proportionality sign. You put an equal to with a constant. Here also we are going to do that. So R is equal to rho L by A. The constant that we use, this is known as resistivity. This is, this constant is known as resistivity. So from here, you can see two things. The third formula of resistance is also visible from here. R is equal to rho L by A. So if resistivity is given to you, you can simply use this formula to solve it. Fine. So three formula of resistance you have done. And resistivity is what? See, understand what is meant by resistivity. This definition of resistivity, you know, we will learn it in the class only. If I take length as one meter and area of cross section as one meter square, can any one of you answer what shall be the relation between resistance and resistivity? R is equal to rho. R is equal to rho. Perfect. So see, R is equal to rho. So what's resistivity? The resistivity is basically the resistance per unit area for one meter length of fire. All right. If you have one meter length of fire and the cross section area of it is one meter square, then all the resistance we call it as resistivity. That's what has been written over here. The resistivity of a material is defined as resistance of a material of unit length and unit area of cross section. This is what is meant by resistivity. So formula of resistance is also there over here. Formula of resistivity is also here. If you just have to find out resistivity, you can rewrite resistivity is Ra divided by L. So you have one formula of resistivity also. Now, another thing. From here, from here, let me tell you one thing. The resistance and resistivity basically have an inverse relation. Whatever is valid for resistance becomes opposite for resistivity. Now see, this was the formula, resistivity is equal to Ra divided by L. We had derived the second formula, remember, from the whole equation, this formula. R is equal to ML divided by A M E square tau. Let's put this formula of resistance into the formula of resistivity. See, resistivity will be what then? Resistivity is R. R was what? ML divided by A N E square tau. R. And what was left? A divided by L. Can you see length? Length gets cancelled. Area, area gets cancelled. 
formula of resistivity is m divided by n e square tau this is the formula of resistivity now one more thing all of you just tell me right now either type it on, uh, type it in the chat box or just tell me orally if i write it, the resistance formula resistivity formula as r a divided by l whatever formula we have seen just now according to this what should be the si unit of resistivity right now all of you just try and let me know in the chat box what should be the formula of resistivity just put everything si units into this Mithun is right. Mariam, something else will also come along with it. Just put everything. What you are writing, that is only for resistance. Right areas, right lengths. See, is anything getting cancelled? And others also? Ziad, you also try. Amin, you also try. What should be the? See, SI unit of resistance is ohm. Area, you people know the SI unit length. Also, you people know. I'm a uh, ohm meter. Ohm meter. Ohm per meter. No, no. Ohm meter. Ohm meter. Right, right. Yes. Ohm meter. See how ohm meter resistance is ohm. Area is meter square. Length is meter. This meter gets cancelled. This squares. This is ohm meter. This is the SI unit of resistivity that will be. So note down all these points. Uh, from here, note down. From here, resistance is the measure of opposition of current flow in an electric circuit, SI unit, and, and whichever doubts you people are facing, ask me. And clear. Yes, Mithun.
and when you all write it down no just text me done in the chat box i'll get to know that all of you have written it Okay, all those who are done can start and try this question meanwhile. Others are writing, length of a wire increases by 2%. You have to find the change in resistance and change in resistivity. Percentage change in resistance and percentages change in resistivity. Note down the question, take two to three minutes, just try it yourself and I'll discuss this.
Any idea, class? What's the answer you people are getting? Anyone is getting any kind of answer? Do you require one or two minutes, or shall we discuss? Anyone who is about to reach the answer? I think we should discuss. Length of a wire increases by two percent. All right. See resistance. Okay, let me tell you one thing. First thing, let me tell you this first. First, let us see what should be the change in resistivity. The formula of resistivity here. Did you notice that area and length actually got eliminated in this? From this, you can conclude that resistivity is independent of length of conductor and area of cross section all right i'll make you write this point also over here the resistivity is actually independent of area and length It depends on material. Like you all must have done in your eleventh standard, Young's modulus. So Young's modulus for steel was different. Young's modulus for aluminium was different. But even there, if there was a slightest amount of aluminium present, the Young's modulus will be the same. Or or take this example. If you have a full glass of water, the density of water in that glass will be thousand kg per meter cube. If you have the full ocean of water, still the density will be thousand kg per meter cube. So these quantities you must have done extrinsic and intrinsic properties. So here these properties depend on the material. They do not depend upon 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 the amount. So resistivity also depends on material. Resistivity for brass is different. Resistivity for zinc is different, and so on. And it does not depend on area. So even if you increase the length of the wire by two percent, what? Take the example as two hundred percent. Resistivity won't get changed. The resistance will change, but resistivity will remain the same. So that's why for resistivity, you should remember resistivity. Resistivity remains the same. All right. So for resistivity, the answer was same. No increment in resistivity. Now, percentage or in change in resistance will be there. Reason: the resistance depends on length and area. Now, can anyone tell? Will the area be affected in this case? Length is increasing by two percent. There is no mention of area. Should we consider area different, or should we consider the same area? According to you people, whatever to you think, I'll I'll help you with it. Just your views. Ma'am will increase, right? Area also. Area will increase according to Mithun. Ziad says it will be the same. All right. See. If I have this wire with me, all right. I have this wire with me. Fine. This is a wire. Now, if I increase its length, what is happening to the area? This was the wire. If I am stretching this wire, this was the initial wire that I had. All right. This is just consider it as a single wire. If I am stretching it. What is happening to the area? Increasing, decreasing, remaining the same. It's increasing area of cross section. This thickness. Area does not mean this. This is the length, Maria Menzia. This is the length. Area means this was the wire. So this is the area of cross section. This. This is the area of cross section. If I am pulling it, if I am stretching it, now what is happening to the area of cross section? Increasing, decreasing, or remaining the same? Hmm. Class. Decreasing. Yes, obviously it will decrease. See, if you take a piece of clay, 
All right, just imagine if you have a piece of clay with you. You increase its length. You have a cylindrical piece of thick clay. If you stretch it, what happens to the area of the cross section? Don't think area of the wire like this. That's the length. Area means the thickness, diameter. If you stretch a piece of clay, which was cylindrical initially, what will happen to the area of cross section? Will it increase or decrease? Decrease. Decrease. So same case is the case of wire. You can imagine like this, though I'm taking a double wire, but you can imagine this as a single wire. For example, I had the single wire with me. Just imagine and think that it's a single wire. Now, if I stretch it, if I stretch it, stretch it, stretch it, I have increased its length. But what happened to the area of cross section? Area of cross section decreased. Decreases, yes. So that's why length will also change. Area of cross section will also change. And so the resistance will change. Now resistance formula is rho L divided by. How do we calculate the percentage change? Final minus initial divided by initial. Or you can say fine, new minus original divided by original into 100. That's how we calculate percentage. Even your marks you calculate like this. Suppose you have scored 95. So that becomes 95 divided by 100 into 100. That is 95%. Like this we calculate. So it means we have to know the new resistance now. So resistivity in this formula will be the same because there won't be any change in resistivity. Length will be new, area will be new. This part clear? Why will length and area change and not resistivity? Clear to all of you? Yes, ma'am. All right. Mariam, clear to you? And what about you, Amin? Clear? Yes, ma'am. Clear. All right, see, now we just have to find out the new length. So percentage change in length. If length increases by 2%, it means original length plus the 2% increment in the length. That's how we calculate the percentage change. So this becomes what? 102L divided by 100. That is 1.02L. So the new length is what? 1.02L. Now, can anyone give me a physical reason? Like when we stretch that piece of clay, when we stretch it, the length increases, but area decreases. Why does the area not remain constant? Which quantity remains constant other fr apart from resistivity? Can you think of it? Anyone, anyone, just a general question. I'll help you. I'll tell you the answer. According to you, which quantity remains same? Yes, Mithun? Volume. Perfect. See, because the volume is the same, quantity of clay was the same, the quantity of wire was the same. So in order to compensate, because you are not adding anything, neither you are deleting nor you are adding, it means volume is still the same. Whatever shape you give, you make it the wire in the form of L shape, you stretch it, increase its length by 2%, you shorten it, decrease it, its length by 4%, anything. Volume is that quantity that is remaining the same because no additional mass has occurred, no additional thing you have added into it. So volume remains the same. If volume remains the same, we can say uh, initial volume is equal to the final volume. Initial volume means initial area into initial length, which is equal to final area into final length. Now we have just concluded the final length value. That is 1.2 into the original length. So area becomes new area we are calculating. That is original area divided by area into L prime. L prime is 1.02 L. So what's the area? New area is A divided 1.02. Now we have the value of new length. We have the value of new area. Let's put it in the formula of new resistance. That becomes resistivity multiplied by what? Resistivity multiplied by length. That is the new length we'll write because L prime, we have the value of L prime now. That is 1.02 L divided by A prime. What's the value of A prime? A prime is A divided by 1.02. So 1.02 will go up. This becomes what? 1.02 whole square. This got multiplied rho L divided by A. This is what? This is R prime. Clear till here? I hope this is getting clear. It's just a mathematical solution. We have just put in all the solve. 
Now, 1.02's whole square will be what? Just, just calculate and see. It should be 1.040. The square should be 1.0401 something. Uh, just anyone, just check. Somebody, just calculate and see what's the square of 1.0404. 1. 1. 0. 0.04. All right, all right. Thank you. So it will be 1.0404. Okay, fine. Thanks. That is rho L divided by A. Now let's calculate the percentage change. So obviously, percentage change will be new res means basically the change in resistance that occurred final minus initial divided by the initial into 100. Actually, this is not so lengthy that it is seeming to us. When you will calculate, if you know the solution, you'll be able to do. And one thing I'll tell you, these kinds of questions come in your code exams. Definitely, these kinds of questions come in the code exams. Now, let's put the value of new resistance and the final resistance that we have. New resistance is 1.0404 minus uh, Rho L divided by A minus only Rho L divided by A divided by Rho L divided by A. Value of R I have kept in 200. See Rho L divided by A, Rho L divided by A, Rho L divided by A will get cancelled. 1.0404 minus 1 becomes 0 0.0404 into 100. So what's the percentage that we are getting? It's 4.04%. This will be the change in resistance. Now one shortcut I will tell you, don't use that shortcut in the board examination. Use that shortcut, not even for your entrances also do not use. Use that shortcut just to check whether you're, the answer that you're getting by solving this is correct or not. That trick is, if the change in length, if the percentage change in length is, let's say X percent, percentage change in the resistance, this will be approximately equal to 2x percent. By this, you can just check whether the answer you are getting is correct or not. Because this won't give you the accurate answer. And in board examination, every step carries half, 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 half marks. By this, the question is made. For example, a two marker question is there. So one part will be for the direction, other part, one number will be for the magnitude. Like this, marks are given. Now, how can you check? For example, let's say my length that I was getting on solving is 6 percent was 6% coming. Now, actual, uh, in the resistance was 6% coming. The value of length percent was what? 2%. So if I double, double it, I should see that my answer should be around 4%. So 6% is not the right answer. I might have committed error while solving this. So what will I do? I'll do it again. If let's say the, I'll get the the way I'm getting is around 4%. So I'll check length is 2%, resistance will be 4% double of it. Means the answer that I'm getting 4.04% is correct. By this, you can just check. This is not so important. If anyone wants to remember this, you can. Otherwise, before this, the solution part that we did, that was important. So note it down. Any issues, let me know. From here.
written class yes ma'am yes ma'am see just now slight easy easy questions are there which come from this portion resistivity and resistance portion let's complete it so that this topic gets so then you can easily go through the temperature resistance and that we'll do tomorrow uh this okay i didn't scroll it till here no just just write it first write this part also see one question that comes is that is very easy question is if you have a cylindrical wire you no know, like this then area is what area of the cross section see it will be confusing for you whether it is asking you the area of the whole wire because area of the whole wire will be length into means basically how you calculate the uh, uh, area of a cylinder pi r n square in that manner otherwise it will be what otherwise you have to tell the area of just the cross section so remember whenever we use the term area that is area of the cross section only so that is pi r square so formula of resistance was what rho l divided by a so in this case resistance will be rho l divided by pi r square if the question comes in this all right note down this thing one last concept from this how questions will come modification last modification will do just note it down and text me done so then i i'll do that last question it's a very short and easy question a tough question was this one okay Oh, done. Last question. Last concept. How the questions come from this? See, it says the resistivity of a material is rho. You have to find the resistance between one and two, three and four, five and six. First, let us see one and two. The resistance formula. Keep the resistance formula in mind. Rho L divided by. Don't forget this formula. Now, a Q void is there. a q void is there so one is this two is this all right this is two this is one so first you have to find the resistance in between these one and two 
so r will be equal to rho resistivity will be the same what will be the length is decided by the separation between 1 and 2 look into the figure what is the separation between 1 and 2 mm -hmm. see the figure l l yes right it is l so that becomes rho l divided by area now how to write the area you will be writing the area of this cross section so that is height into breadth that becomes H into D. Clear? This first part clear? Yes, yes. no? Yes, no. Others? All right. Now let's see the second part. Second part says 3 and 4. So this was the cuboid. 3 means this, 4 means this. 1, 2 we did. So 3 is this. Fourth is this. This one is fourth. This one is third one. So, Mariam, you tell me what's the separation between three and four? Look into the figure. Mariam. Uh, separation, separation. This above part and this below part. What is the separation between them? These are two quantity only height. Yes, that is height. They are separated by height. So rho h will be here. Now the length will be h. Fine. The, now this time the rho, uh, length will be h because these two surfaces are separated by h. Now, I Amin, mean, can you tell what should be the area? Length into height. Length into breadth. Not great. See, this is now the cross sectional area. No, this was the three surface. So this is what this is the breadth. This is the length. So length into breadth. Height is this. Height into length will be different. So this becomes L into B. This is how we solve it. Third part is between 5 and 6. 5 and 6 means the front surface and the back surface. This surface and this surface. So cuboid, no, cuboid is like this. So the front surface, this is the fifth one and backward is, is sixth one. Ziyad, can you tell me what is the separation between front one and back one? Fifth and sixth by looking into the figure. This and this. Yes, five and six. So five is this, six is this back one. Five, six. How are they separated? Look into the figure. How is the front face? Mariam, right? Ziyad? See, length is this. So this, yes, breadth, right? Breadth. They are separated by this distance, no? And that is the breadth. So rho, uh, R will be equal to rho. And this is breadth. Mithun, can you tell me what will be the area? Um, L into H. L into H. Others see how L into H. We are talking about this surface. This is the height. Look into the figure. This is the height. This is the length. So area of fifth will be what? L into here, this is how we solve if you get a cuboid question. All right, copy it. Just text me when you have written it.
थ्री एंड फोर्थ आर द टॉप एंड बॉटम ये टॉप एंड बॉटम वन वन एंड टू आर द राइट एंड लेफ्ट थ्री एंड फोर्थ टॉप एंड बॉटम फाइव एंड सिक्स फ्रंट एंड एक्चुअली इट वॉज डिफिकल्ट टू शो दिस इन टू डी सो दैट्स वाई फाइव सिक्स लुक इन द सेम पेज बट बेसिकली फाइव वॉज द फ्रंट वन सिक्स Okay, um, that's done. Let's just wait for others. Others also have completed. Mariam done. What about Mithun and Ziad? Over, ma'am. Oh, all right. So let me stop here. The next class we'll continue from here. Temperature, how temperature affects resistance and everything. We'll see few graphs also that we'll see tomorrow in the next class. Till the time, revises and we'll end.